Okay, so very good day to all. Uh, today we are going to discuss about a particular uh, very important topic and uh, would like to call it as the uh, Phillips curve. And the Phillips curve is a very important theory which explains the relationship between inflation and the rate of unemployment in an economy. You might know what is inflation. Inflation, we can define inflation as the as a sustained or a persistent rise in the rate of prices in an economy. We, uh, I repeat, it is a sustained and a persistent rise in the prices of goods and services is called an inflation. And there are so many theories associated with inflation. Some of them can be listed as the demand pull inflation, the cost push inflation, the mixed demand inflation, the sectoral demand shift theory, and we have so many theories. In that line, uh, the very important theory, one of the very important theory in that line is the concept called the Phillips curve. Phillips curve. And this curve is named after an important Australian economist, A. W. Phillips. A. W. Phillips. So he was very much interested in the concept of inf inflation and he tried to analyze the relationship between inflation and unemployment. So we collected or uh, collected a time series data of uh, inflation and the level of unemployment in UK for a period of 100 years and he identified very important findings or he tried to find out very important findings from that particular analysis. His intention was to identify which is more important, whether it is a demand pull or the cost push which is the dominant factor which determines the level of inflation in an economy. But he came to a very important conclusion, very surprising finding. And what was that finding? In that particular finding, he identified that there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment in the economy. So what is that inverse relationship? He identified that when we reduce the level of unemployment in the economy, the rate of inflation in the economy has increased. So this was a very important finding and a very astonishing finding in the economy. And what is the relevance of that particular analysis? So he explained that relationship with the help of a simple diagram. And the diagram goes like this. And on this axis we measure the level of uh, uh, unemployment. So in this axis we call it as inflation or it is uh, original analysis, it is stated as a rate of change in the money wages. Rate of change in the money wages. So in his analysis, the relationship between unemployment and the inflation or the rate of change in the money wages uh, was identified like this. So this was the curve that he, he plotted in, his, in this particular diagram. And this is a downward sloping curve. And in this particular curve, we have seen that at this point, he identified that this is a particular rate of unemployment in the economy, where he plotted it as a 5.5 percentage of unemployment in the economy. And as you all know, here we rate, you have measured the rate of uh, change of uh, money wages in the economy. So at 5.5 percentage of unemployment in the economy, the rate of change in the money wages is considered as uh, zero. And if the rate of unemployment decreases from 5.5 percentage to somewhere around 4 percentage, we have seen that the rate of change in the money wages has increased. So there is an increase in the rate of change in the money wages when unemployment is produced. And uh, suppose the rate of unemployment in the economy again reduced to somewhere around 3 percentage, he stated that there could be another increase in the rate of change in the money wages in the economy. So this rate of change in the money economy, in the money wages in the economy, can create a sort of inflationary pressure in the economy. So he concluded that there is an inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation in the economy. If we reduce the rate of unemployment in the economy, we have to pay a cost for it. That is in the form of rising the uh, money wages or ultimately it could lead to an inflation in the economy. On the other hand, he also stated that if the unemployment increases from 5.5 percentage to somewhere around 7 percentage or something like that, we can see that the money wages will have a negative change. The rate of change in the money wages is somewhere negative. So this particular in unemployment in the economy will have a very important effect or influence on the rate of change in the money wages or inflation in the economy. So this relationship we call it as the Phillips curve analysis. 
And he also explains why this happens, why this particular relationship happens in the economy. So he had identified some important reasons for that. And the very first point, we can list out some important points for that. The first important explanation or the reason for this particular inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation in the economy is the bargaining power of the trade unions. If the level of unemployment, whenever the level of unemployment falls from 5.5 percentage to 4 or 3 in the economy, what is happening in the economy? The unemployment decreases, which means that there are less amount of unemployed persons in the economy, which raises the demand for the laborers in the economy, which raises, raises the demand for the laborers in the economy. So the bargaining power of the trade unions or the laborers will increase tremendously and this will lead to an increase in the money wages in the economy. So that is a very important point. So that was the reason. So uh, the bargaining power. Suppose the unemployment increases in the economy from 5.5 percentage to 6 percentage or 7 percentage or to 8 percentage. We can see that the, trade, the bargaining power of the management will increase. So they can influence the money wages. Of course, they may reduce the money wages because they absorb there are so many unemployed, unemployed people are there in the society. So this unemployment, either an increase or decrease in the level of unemployment, will shift the bargaining power from the management to the uh, trade units in the economy. So that was pointed out as the first uh, very solid reason for this particular relationship between unemployment and inflation in the economy. The second important reason for that, whenever there is an excess demand for labor in the economy, whenever the economy experiences an excess demand for labor, we can see there is an inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation in the economy. So that was another important thing. And the third one is that Whenever there is a shortage of uh, labor in the economy or when the population or uh, other factors which uh, reduces the level of unemployment, the level of employment in the economy affects the economy or influences the economy, this relationship uh, emerges into the system. So there is a particular relationship which is very relevant in the economy. So this theory was considered as a very important theory and it has so many policy implications. Many, many government has used this particular relationship. Whenever a socialist or a pro-labor government enters into the society or enters or enters into the uh, 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 to the power, they will always try to reduce the level of unemployment because they are always in the favor of the uh, people in the economy, or they will provide employment opportunities to the people. That means that there is a fall in the level of unemployment in the economy, and but uh, uh, that will lead to an increase in the inflation in the economy. On the other hand, if a capitalist oriented government enters into the power, they will always go in favor of the producers or investors and they will never go for a high rate of inflation. They will always try to reduce the level of inflation in the economy or a price rise in the economy, which can lead to an increase in the unemployment in the economy. So, uh, so this particular theory has so many implications in the economy, in the hope, in the policy formulation uh, uh, of the government and it has helped so many political parties to create their own policies, agendas and strategies in order to govern the system in the economy. So this had a very important influence in the day-to-day -day economic activities, day-to-day -day policy implications of the government. And uh, this is the Phillips curve. And so what is the Phillips curve? So we'll conclude by again uh, reminding what is Phillips curve. Phillips curve simply explains the inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation in the economy. Or in other words, it explains the inverse relationship between unemployment and rate of change in the money wages. In other words, we can we will, we will try to explain it in some other words like there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. So this explains the trade-off. If you try to reduce the of unemployment in the economy, it will lead to an increase in the level of uh, inflation in the economy. So, uh, if we increase the level of unemployment in the economy, it will lead to a fall in the level of uh, uh, inflation in the economy or money wages in the economy. So, there is a trade off between inflation and unemployment. So, we, are, we can also use this uh, concept there is a trade off between inflation and unemployment. So, Phillips curve simply explains. There is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment, or there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Thank you.